Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Dr. Mark Gomez, but you can call me Dr. G, and welcome to Health 360 with Dr. G. Today's topic, fabulously fit in 30 minutes. Hey, welcome back, everybody. My name is Dr. Mark Gomez. I'm a board-certified internal medicine physician practicing at Edward Hospital in Naperville, Illinois. I'm also a member of the American College of Lifestyle Medicine, and you guys are in for a treat today. Fabulously fit in 30 minutes. That's right, exercise, y'all. We're going to break it down, something that we always do. So let me frame it like this. We're going to have just a dynamic discussion. We're going to get right into it because we've got so much to cover to benefit you. Remember, at the end of the day, I want you to have all the resources to be successful in everything that you do in your health and in your life. Remember, your health is your wealth. We've got to pay attention. But taking that first step, that leap of faith is going to be important. And when it comes to fitness, it's no different. Think about it. Would you take a magic pill that could allow you to eat more, ease stress, and boost brain power? I know I would. (laughs) There is something that could be done, and it does that and more, and it's called exercise. No matter your age, you can find activities that benefit you and your abilities and your personal needs. And what if I told you that you can do that and unlock the health benefits of exercise in as little as 30 minutes? half hour, and we're going to talk about what we can do today to get us back on shape, back on charge, and really go ahead and do everything that we can to make our health as rewarding as we want it to be. Again, welcome everybody, Health360 with Dr. G. Check me out on my website, www.health360podcast.com, and check me out on all sorts of social media, all across social media, at health, uh, at health, 360 with Dr. G. So you guys are in for a treat today. Um, before I introduce my guests, uh, which are who are fabulous, uh, I want to basically hit you with a quick disclaimer as always. Here we go. Let's do it. All right. The content of Health 360 with Dr. G, a healthy driven podcast is for your information and entertainment purposes only. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. So here we go. Fabulously fit in 30 minutes. Can we get it done? We're going to answer that question. All right. I want to introduce my guest today. And these guests are fierce. I'm so excited. My first guest, he and I have known each other for a long time. We share mutual patients and just, 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 just similarities in how we think and approach problems, but also talking about the things that we want to do, not only for ourselves personally, but what we, what we try to tell our patients and advise them and coach them through everything. So I want to introduce my first guest, Dr. Luke Greenwell. Uh, Dr. Greenwell is owner at Recover RX Physical Therapy, LLC. Dr. Luke, welcome to the show. Dude, thanks for having me. I am so pumped. I mean, that intro already is fire. It's got me fired up. Um, this topic has me fired up to be on with you and Paula. Um, uh, yeah, I just can't wait to talk about all, all right. things fitness here and recovery. Um, say a little bit about me. Yeah, uh, please do. Fitness. Give me a little bit of your credentials, my friend. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, I've been sports, uh, been in sports and fitness my whole life, and it, that led me into the physical therapy profession. And I got my doctorate in physical therapy almost a decade ago, uh, and that led me into the, kind of the sports medicine field. Um, uh, hopped around a couple different clinics, but mostly focusing on that sports medicine patient, and kind of really always saw that avenue of uh, people are going to get better if they are healthy right? And um, health and fitness and strength and conditioning were always part, have always been part of my treatment plan for my patients and in addition to my life. So um, as I went out and started my own business, I really went and focused on strength and conditioning, uh, fitness as an integral part of my patient's care and my plan for my patients. Um, and obviously with our similarities and our talks over the years, um, you know, it just totally makes sense as, the, as, as that holistic approach to people being healthy. And uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, it's always been a passion of mine, my health and my fitness, and uh, not only just with strength and conditioning, but, you know, sleep, nutrition, diet, you know, it, when all those aren't di- dialed in together, I feel the difference. And I know my patients do too. And my clients do too. So if I don't practice what I preach, uh, you know, it's it's hard to uh, really convey that message to people and to get them to buy in. So you know, that's really my philosophy, and uh, excited to talk more about it with you two awesome people. 
Awesome. Awesome. Dr. Luke, thanks for coming out. I just can't wait to get a little granular, but you hit the head on the nail. You know, it takes a village without a doubt. And so doing these kind of things today for you, those of you guys out there joining us here at Health 360 with Dr. G, again, one of the things I want you to do, and I'm going to introduce Paula McBride in just a second. I want you to go ahead and take that pin. I like this pin in particular, health360podcast.com. Why not? Uh, but take a pen and paper, write that down. What we're going to try to do is give you so many tips on what you can do to improve your health and fitness. I want to introduce my next guest, she and I have connected for a long time, kind of a recent connection, and yeah, I say a long time, but hey, we feel like we are like lost souls. So yeah. that's what I'm talking about. So that's why it's a lot of time. So I want to introduce, introduce my fabulous friend and colleague, uh, Ms. Paula McBride. Let me, introduce, let me read her credentials because her credentials run deep. Paula McBride, she's a fitness instructor. She's a yoga and Pilates trainer. She's a personal trainer, group exercise coordinator at Edward Elmer's Health Fitness Center. Paula, welcome to the show. Well, thank you so much, Dr. G and Luke. Nice to nice to meet you today. Um, you guys, I too love fitness. I just grew up as an athlete, you know, as a, a child, then as a you know young young uh, teen, and then just kept going on. I I was from a small town, so you know I could be on the basketball team and the volleyball team and the track team all at the same time, you know. Um, but anyway, but I grew to love fitness and. Um, and I love uh, to help people. So what a great combination to be able to help someone be the best that they can be and, you know, just enjoy it at the same time. My, my, what I like to say is um, you don't have to be great to get started, but you have to get started to be great. So, um, I, so I'm all about, you know, helping someone take that next step. Yeah. So I love, you know, from uh, teaching cycling to, to, uh, the TRXs to a, a boot camp or whatever it might be, you know, for someone to start from the very beginning and see them improve is just, it's like gold. It's gold. So I'm excited to, to talk about this today and the 30 minute fab, be fabulous in 30 minutes. Woo. It can happen. That. No doubt. No doubt. I love it. Yeah. Hey, hey, you know, one of the things you just said, you know, as you're saying, you know, you have to, you don't, you, we're not expecting greatness. And, and for people, I always tell this to my patients, I go, you know, we, 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 we're, we are an imperfect people for some reason striving for perfection and, and perfection doesn't exist. But I say this, I always appreciate effort. There you go. That's a Dr. G thing. There you go. Love it. <laughs> All right, Love everybody. It. So you met my you met my amazing gaze, uh, Dr. Luke Greenwell, uh, Ms. Paul McBride. And here's how the show works. I ask the questions and they give me some awesome answers. And every now and then I participate a little bit, but I'm giving them the hard stuff. I get all the easy stuff. It's all good. But no, this show is for you out there, fitness lovers fitness novices, people that just want to think about fitness. Uh, we just This show is for everybody, inclusive and everything. But again, we want to highlight, can this be done in 30 minutes? The answer is yes. But let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Let's get really granular. So here it is. Um, I'm going to start out with with uh, just kind of some general overview. We're going to get into some frequently asked questions that you guys have out there, out in out in uh, uh, in the land, and supporting Health 360 with Dr. G. We're going to uh, get into an "Is It True" section, something that's new on the show that I've created specifically for Luke and Paula. And of course, we'll get into the fan favorite called "Miss Versus Facts," and we'll sum it on up. But again, don't let this conversation fall in deaf ears. You know, th this conversation does not end here today. I want you guys to just go ahead and feel the vibe, feel the energy, take the energy, that positivity with you, and apply the next day. And of course, if you have any questions, contact your physician, contact your fitness expert. We're here to help you along the way. So here we go. Let's get to that first question. Here we go, Dr. Luke. Here's my first question. All right. The word fitness is commonly defined as the condition of being physically fit. What does that word mean to you, both personally and professionally? The hot seat, right? I love these questions. Hey, really. there you go. <laughs> That's awesome. how you're in the show. <laughs> Yeah, that's the show. That's the title of the show. That's why we're on. I mean, so fitness to me, right, is um, has evolved over the over the years, right? Initially, I think growing up, you, I think you thought think of fitness as being athletic, right? Participating in sports. Um, as you get through high school and you start to mature through high school, I think you start to visualize fitness as growing muscle, having that six pack, right? Having having a chest, right? And 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 then you start to evolve you get into uh, a point and I played collegiate soccer where fitness was an avenue to perform, um, right. To, to see what my body could do and what I could, you know, where I could take it. Uh, so it became almost a challenge uh, where um, fitness was 
what can my body do and how can I take it to the next level? And that was like through my twenties. Right. And, uh, diet wasn't a part of it and nutrition wasn't part of it and sleep wasn't a part of it. It was just, you know, what can my body do? How high can I jump? How fast can I run? And those types of things. And now I'm, as I've matured in, in, in my profession, um, I look at fitness as um, kind of this more holistic approach of, uh, okay, I, I might have the best lungs in the world or maybe the strongest guy, but if my if I'm not eating the right things, right, I'm not going to be performing at my best. I'm not going to be fit physically or, um, uh, you know, mentally fit too, right? That has become a big part of my latest progression in fitness. Uh, and I realized that with, uh, you know, working out and both mentally and physically now I'm evolving in this new type of fit person. Right. And I think it's been such a great journey for me and I'm hoping to help others realize like fitness isn't just getting off the couch and going to the gym. Right. It's this, this whole uh, component of things that uh, really come together and make you fit. So Wonderful. You know, for me, I think about, you know, you mentioned it again, the performance, you were in this performance mindset for so long, and now you're looking at it from a global health and fitness is health. It's almost got like a health arm and it's got a performance arm. And, uh, and, and sometimes we forget about the health arm. It's not until you get, what's it saying? A day older, a day wiser. And then also you're like, oh, okay. I don't have to beat myself up to a pole into a pole and then now I can actually do be a little more smarter about it and then actually look at these unlock these health benefits let me ask you this question Paula when you think about fitness that word to you personally professionally what's your take what does it mean to you when you hear that word you know fitness? I'll tell you Luke Luke hit it where when you're younger you're thinking about you know the the biceps the the quads I mean you're just looking at the the outside but fitness to me is being fit, but it's wellness. It's being well, you know, it's more about not only physically, but mentally, like Luke had said, but it's, it's an obligation, not just to yourself, because I believe that we're all our own health advocate, right? Yeah. Um, who's going to take care of you? You need to take care of you. You need to make the decisions to do it right from eating to sleeping, hydration, all these things. But um, so fitness to me is an obligation to myself and to my family, my loved ones, so that I'm in the best shape that I can be so that I can enjoy time with them in a, you know, a nice, healthy, um, long life with my, with my children, right? Hope and grandchildren and husband and, uh, you know. I love that, it. That kind of thing. It's, 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 go ahead. Please. No, I was just going to say it, it's so important, um, you know, just to have that nice rounded fitness, that wellness, you know, and, and take care of yourself. It's like, it's like, who doesn't want longevity? Who doesn't want vitality? Who doesn't mm -hmm. want quality of life and continued sense of purpose? <laughs> and, and I truly believe that fitness is a way to bind all that together because there's just so many benefits without a doubt. So let me ask this question to, uh, to Luke. Luke, um, here we are, of course. COVID-19, let's get right into it. COVID-19 has certainly changed the way people work out. How has is, how is the approach changed when you think about your international, your, your clients? You know, I don't know if you had to, you had to pivot yourself as an as a owner of a, of, a, of a business, of a performance business. And same thing, I'll ask that question for you, Paula, after Luke uh, answers it. But, but how have you had to make an adjustment to still meet the demands of your clients and to do it in a very, maybe even a shorter time frame or a different kind of scenario? How do you do that? So I think I was just thinking about that, that previous question, this kind of piggy, piggy tails into it, you know, the demands of the, the human condition right now, as compared to a couple hundred years ago, are much different, right? Like, from a physical demand standpoint, and then, you know, we just, we, there aren't the manual labor needs, you know, food is presented to us, right? Like, and then you, you take this COVID-19, um, you know, just crazy like shock to our systems, right? And you speed up this process of um, things that are just available to us now at home, right? And people are at home. They don't have the need. They didn't have the need to go out. They didn't have the need. They weren't able to really work out or access a fitness facility. So what this sedentary type of lifestyle that we've kind of migrated to in the last um, 20 years, maybe even a little bit longer here, uh, 
you know, had just like sped up, right? It was like light speed of people deconditioning at home. And what I started to see, at least, you know, I had to pivot in my um, business initially was seeing people via telehealth, right? You know, you had to do it as well, Dr. Gomez, and maybe you as well, Paula, just talking to people through a screen about, hey, you got to stay active. And, you know, this is going to be totally different. It might not feel like much now, but you know, six months down the road, these effects of, of your sedentary style right now that you've been forced to do are going to take are going to take a toll on your body. Um, so as um, you know, as I started to see people in the clinic, what they were, they were uh, in bad shape with chronic pain, chronic postural pain, neck pain. And, you know, a lot of them said, well, what's wrong with me? Like, did I strain my back or anything? I'm like, no, actually, it's just you're not moving. Your body, we are built to move. Uh, our, our nerves, like movement, blood flow, and we're just sitting at home and you're not doing much. And it's not your fault. This was thrust upon you. But if anything that's going to make you better is, is you just need to start a walking program maybe manipulate your day to look like it used to. And then maybe you used to walk to the train, walk outside, walk back to your house, then get started at work. Right. So I was mostly treating lifestyle issues for people that had, had, um, you know, had the shock to their system, a shock to their schedule. Uh, so, you know, it was a little different from my hands-on strength training approach. It was more just talking through things because, yeah. you know, people had a lot of stress on their plate and, uh, it was really, really interesting. And I, and I, I'm just glad I was able to still touch people and, and help people through this crazy year that we've had. Um, and yeah, fitness was totally different for people. Um, I guess one pro was people were getting out and running and trying all different types of things <laughs> to, to, you know, cause they were there's, going there's crazy. No doubt. They were, yeah. People were having cabin yeah. fever. Right. Uh, right. I think it was like, uh, what was it like bike sales, bicycle sales were at all time high. Um, you know, people getting running shoes. I mean, it was just a beautiful thing to watch from, uh, from I was seeing a lot of running, a lot of running injuries and uh, like, yeah, <laughs> just yeah. people, people just going, you know, trying different things. So, it was, I mean, at least that was one positive thing coming out. What's your take, Paula, on just kind of, you know, the, you know, and then we're going to get into some FAQs in a second, but what's your take on just, you know, kind of reflecting on this past year, but still trying to do what you do for your clients that come in and still be in a motor manufacturer and tell us still to keep them fit uh, you know, how have you had to ad 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 adapt and adjust? Well, you know, the health club, um, we closed down for a few months, but during that time, uh, we were fortunate enough to get to get uh, to do um, uh, classes online. So we, we went to Facebook, our Edwards Facebook, and we had uh, instructors come in and teach a class live to our to our members. And so it was really, really nice that they really responded well by um, you know just saying oh thank goodness you're doing this and what was nice is that they knew us they uh, they're used to our styles and so they they really had a great time um, but the funny thing was you know instead of bi uh, bicep uh, I'm sorry instead of uh, dumbbells and such they're using bleach bottles or you know a water bottle <laughs> green beans you know so they were they were getting very creative it was really really nice uh, but. Um, so we did that. And then uh, when we did start coming back, we had outdoor classes. So we roped off pieces of our uh, 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 parking lot and uh, we roped off classes out there. So, so we can all stay outside and get that, get like a, a, a yoga class. And we had TRX outside and we had cycling outside. It was, it looked like a three ring circus and it was a blast. So we had people coming back like that and just others still, you know, you had to respect everyone's space. So, um, but it was really nice to see them just starting to come back, starting to come back, you know, and staying fit. And then, um, uh, well, we just, loved it and they were just so appreciative and we appreciated them sticking with us and uh and making making that time at home and that uh you know uh it was just positive and um laughed about it and then also when we started coming back they came back slowly and uh felt very comfortable because we made it as as uh, safe as possible. It was really great. We had great support from the hospital. I love it. Well, I think you, you, you both hit the, hit, the, hit the head on the nail. You know, we took a challenge, but turned it into an opportunity. Uh, 
And so when I think about your fitness, this is an opportunity to those of you guys that are listening right now on Health360 with Dr. G. Again, check us out, www.health360podcast.com. Uh, you know, this is an opportunity. And, and so these words, yes, we've gone through these challenges, but I truly believe in this community approach and helping each other out. We're in the businesses that we're in, our professions, because we want to help people, a business of service to help you be a better version of yourself. And I think that's such a great thing when you have people that are aligned to support you along the way. So I think that as an opportunity, so fitness as an opportunity to unlock a door for so many more possibilities. So let's get into some FAQs, y'all. We'll get right into that, to the, to the meat of it all. We're talking about, again, uh, Fabulously Fit in 30 minutes. So here we go. What I'm gonna say is I'm gonna say the question and then I'm gonna have our panelists kind of give us an answer. We're gonna to try to get through as many of these as possible because I know you guys out there have questions. We're gonna to try to answer them as, and then as much as we can. So here we go. I like this one. Here's the first question for, for Dr. Luke. This, is, uh, this encompasses everything. I love this thing. Here we go. I am short on time to regularly exercise. Is there something I can do quickly that will get me the best results as fast as possible? Love this question um, because I have um, just come across some awesome new articles and some research on the like minimally effective dose of exercise, right? This is awesome. This is like what people are go. looking for, right? And, you know, typically that, you know, the, the, the recommendations are right, 30 minutes of exercise a day, even, maybe even a little more for some people, but they, they did this. Um, there was a study in Norway and they took a bunch of different groups and they, they had a group that, and then these are 70 to 79 year olds. So <laughs> awesome, right? Like a little older Love and it. we'll see if there's, there's a minimally effective dose of exercise. And they had one group doing um, two days out of the week, doing four rounds of four minutes. And that was it. That was their, that was the workout. And it was four by four, high yeah. intensity. Yeah. Oh, like almost Tabata style, with, but a, a high intensity interval training, four minutes, of trying to get around 85 to 90% of your peak heart rate. Um, and then they had a group doing the 30 minutes, five days a week, and then another group doing more like a moderate intensity, longer duration exercise. The group that did the high intensity training a couple of days a week had better outcomes from their like VO2 max or their ability to take in oxygen. And they had, they showed an overall slightly lower overall mortality rate. So we're talking, uh, you could get a, a minimally effective dose of exercise in under 15 minutes now. All right. And some are even suggesting just four minutes of high intensity exercise two or three times a week, and then add a couple other days of 30 minutes or so of moderate exercise. That might be enough now. And that's really cool. But the key there is with those small, short durations, it's got to be high intensity. You got to be breathing heavy and it's got to be work. And so I think initially it might be a good idea to have someone such as Paula or myself really, you know, see where you're at as far as a heart rate max or a peak heart rate, because you want to be safe there and you want to get to the 85, 90%, and then have like some sort of wearable technology. I know you want to touch on that later oh, yeah. about, so you can give it an idea of where you're at within these training intervals. So really cool stuff. I think it's really great that we're starting to see these studies and give people an easier entry into exercise, right? Like lower the barrier even farther. And uh, really, really cool and excited about that. that I uh, love that from, from, a, from, a, from a physician standpoint, just when you blend some of the science and then to the uh, blending the medical world and the extra, the fitness world, it, it's, it's like a, it's like a ham and cheese sandwich. It goes together. <laughs> I don't even know why I said ham and cheese sandwich, but it's all good, yeah. but it blends yeah. together and it works well. Uh, we'll, 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 and and the, the outcomes that you can have when you have like-minded people and now saying we can make it effective for you. And as you said, slightly lower in mortality, make people feel better. And so I think about the health benefits that unlock more possibilities in your life. Love it. Here we go. Next question here, Paul, I like this one for you. FAQ, I like this one. All right. Again, also related to what Dr. Luke just said, how can I get in shape quickly after a long time of being inactive? And now they want to be active again. How can people get in shape quickly when they've had a period of inactivity? Well, one thing is get a personal trainer. Get a personal trainer that can assess you and see where you are at the moment so you can safely get into shape quickly. Um, that's a choice. That's one thing. Uh, just get started. Get a game plan. You, you know, a lot of um, a lot of getting back in shape. What you know is, is your intake, what what the calories you put in uh, have to be more. Uh, you have to work off more calories than you ingest 
to to make a difference you know so but but get a personal trainer uh write down your goals um stick to it be consistent uh get a get a buddy get a workout buddy you know someone that will keep you um accountable that's really important i mean just just do um jump rope jump rope is a great thing if you have nothing better to do do jump rope or even split your workout into little bite-sized pieces because it's been a long time maybe you do a 10 minute bit here and then you do a 10 minute bit later on in the afternoon and then you do a 10 minute bit at night and eventually you smash them all together you got a half hour you know <laughs> so but yeah just, it's like the slight edge you know you just do a little bit at a time and um you end up getting a great workout your body will change and remember that you've been off for a while so don't expect it to be overnight listen to your body give yourself the um, ability and the time to do it right so that you don't have injury because then you're at ground zero right so so make sure that you're doing things correctly make sure you hydrate make sure you're eating well and a very important point is to get some sleep sleep well yeah, so there's, and make there's... it a nice overall <laughs> Uh, workout. I, I, I love the last part that you said, because you, as you know, we are in a perpetual sleep deprived society. As a matter of fact, mm -hmm. uh, compared to 100 years ago, the average person in this country sleeps about an hour to an hour and a half less per day than 100 years ago. And people were just as busy uh, 100 years ago, there's no doubt, but but we have a certainly perpetually sleep deprived society. Let me ask you this question, Dr. Luke. I like this one. Here we go. I get this asked a lot. Morning exercise or evening exercise, does it matter? Dr. Luke? Are you still coming out? Yeah. No. So morning exercise or evening exercise. Can you hear me all right? Yeah, we can. Go right ahead. Okay. So, I mean, I think it, to, to be honest, I, I wouldn't say there's research to, to support one or the other as the most effective. I really think it is based on the person, right? And, you know, this is probably 10 years of, of being within the fitness industry and just, you know, noticing that um, you know, it, it really is person dependent, right? Mm -hmm. uh, some people are early morning people. They want to get their fitness in the morning. They want to get going. They want to get the blood flow going. They want to get moving. And that's how they start their day, right? Mm -hmm. And it is very effective for them. Personally speaking, for me, this is anecdotal, but mm -hmm. uh, morning is not a great time for exercise for me. Like my body is not ready to go at that point. Um, so, you know, I'm more of an evening guy. And uh, it helps me sleep better. Uh, and it gives me, um, you know, that better evening feeling at night. And I'm not feeling so like slouchy and lazy. Mm -hmm. But um, I think as long as you're, you've tested out the two, right? See which works better for you. And if you don't feel like, um, you know, fitness, if you're having trouble working out and all you do is try the morning out, right? Then you never know if you actually... Uh, you don't enjoy fitness, right? Because our bodies are in different states in the morning versus the evening versus midday. Mm -hmm. And you, you just have to really um, find what is going to work for you and what is going to keep you consistent, right? Mm -hmm. And that's really key. Have that schedule, have that consistency, and it better feel good to you. You better enjoy it, right? If you dread that 5.30 a.m. class, then you're not going to have a, a successful beneficial workout. It's just not going to happen. So um, I think that those are my tips for the yeah. morning versus evening. That's great. That's, oh. that's awesome. Mm -hmm. I love how you said, you know, you're really implying that, you know, exercise, fitness, it's, it's a person, it can be, it's a personal journey. And, and sometimes you have to experiment with different kinds of things to find what you really like, what works for you, but it's really a personal thing. And I always say like, if you're, if, if you're trying to live somebody else's best life, you're not living your best life. Uh, and, and so, so this is an opportunity for, for you out there to really take, take the reins of this, take control of the situation and, and do what you want. And I would say, I would say just move, just the, you, you both you mentioned earlier, just the, just that move, just to move with purpose, to move with passion. It's a beautiful thing. And I, it, it, but it's, it's also an addictive thing. And we like that. We want to do it more and more. So let's ask this question uh, to Paul. I like this one. Here we go. Uh, another FAQ. Here it is. Cardio before strength or strength before doing cardio? Ooh, What's your take okay. on that one? Well, I believe it's, first of all, what is your goal? Mm -hmm. If you're trying Good to point. build strength, right? You're trying to build strength. Uh, here's the, the pros and cons maybe. You're trying to build strength. So if you work do cardio first, you might not have enough energy to, to give it your all for that strength portion of your workout. 
On the other hand, if you're trying to uh, train for a, let's say a marathon or something, and you do your strength first, uh, yeah, and you do your strength first, and then you might be pooped out to be able to hit the, your long run for that day or, or your short run or whatever it might be. So I think it depends on your goal. And, um, but I think for the, for the, the normal person that wants to do uh, a, a workout, I mean, for me personally, I like to do my cardio first and then I do my strength because I like that sweat. I like, I feel like it's a really great warm up, and I'm ready to go and, uh, and I get it done. And then I go into my strength because, uh, that's that's my personal preference. So there's so many reasons why you and I are like lost souls because that's exactly what Dr. G does. That's exactly what I do. <laughs> no, but but it's but it's, it's, it's awesome. So but but again, I, I love how you know it's still part of your personal journey. That's what it works for you. What works for Dr. Luke, it works for Dr. Luke. And again, for your clients out there, you know, you guys are trying to work with them to find something that works for them to keep them motivated and keep them at it. Can I chime in on that? Please go right ahead. Chime in real quick. Sometimes you can blend it, right? Sometimes it have to be one or the other. And you think that some people get, get caught up like, okay, should I do the elliptical before I go do my weights, right? But a lot of really great workouts involve um, a cardio portion within a strength portion. And um, you can kind of cycle it within one workout. And I think some, you know, changing it up like that can really create, um, you know, sometimes it gets boring to keep doing one thing and then, you know, cardio, then strength, cardio, then strength. So you know, look for different ways to mix it up. And mm -hmm. uh, think I, I like to blend mine in together a lot of the time so excellent here we go next question this comes right back at you dr luke i like this one um what should i be doing in the gym or at home right now to get my body beach ready in time for the summer We've got three months y'all what, what do we need to be doing right now uh luke <laughs> curls all day no <laughs> <laughs> curls for the girls no uh yeah, I mean, tone, right? I think we're talking mostly about tone. Yeah, we're um, talking about tone, yeah. And, and you know, the, the different types of, you know, strength, power, endurance, um, you know, there, there's different types of, of ways that you could build muscle. I mean, you're starting to talk about tone, toning down or toning muscle, then you're, you're talking about a little bit lower load and then a longer duration on uh, some of the reps that you're doing, right? And so, and you're wanting, you know, if you're going to be talking about beach ready bodies, uh, you're talking about some of hitting some of the bigger muscle groups, right? And I think Paula can talk on this, you know, you're talking about bench press and you're talking about bicep curls and squats and stuff like that, that, you know, you really can partition them out. And, but you're, if you're, if you're talking about tone in the gym and lifting weights, then you really want to look at the, uh, the lower load and maybe like three sets of 15 to 20 repetitions of your exercise. All right. To look to, more towards tone, but there are a lot of strength athletes out there that will do low, you know, higher load and yeah. lower reps and they, they'll have a nice strong beach body. And, um, but you got to remember some of those people do four hours of fitness a day and right. It's just not going to happen that way. Uh, you don't have the time for that sometimes, but, uh, you know, if you're really honing it in for that toned beach body, look for that lower load, higher reps, uh, major muscle groups, and, uh, you should find yourself in good shape about eight to 12 weeks from now. Excellent. Mm, That's key. Can, can That's I add key. to that? Please go right yeah, ahead, absolutely. Paula. Right. Go right ahead. Yeah, like, like, you, you know, the fabulous, fabulous, fabulously fit in 30 minutes, I, you could get that from, you know, you could do that and be ready. Um, yeah. And I think that we need to go back to that hit, you know, the high intensity interval training thing. And, and you might not be completely buff, which you will, you'll, you'll be dropping body fat and, uh, and which will show, let your muscles show through, which would be really, really wonderful. But I really think that if you, if you want to do something like just be body fit, hit, do a series of hit, do 30 minutes, you know, and, and get it going, uh, pick something that you like. I mean, just, just have a great time. Like, uh, Luke was saying, maybe it was yourself. Have fun, have fun doing this, challenge yourself, get a buddy, get a buddy to do it. Um, right now I, I've challenged my own, um, husband to do a 30 minute hit class with me because of this, this, uh, 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 series i said this is going to be fantastic let's i i just want to let's see what we got going on um so um uh that's what we're doing I, we're every night we're going to go ahead and, and do the 30 minute hit class and it's been it's we've done it now three nights and it's been great 
Excellent. It's been great. So, um, and he's dying and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, he's cursed your name. And so like, am I, uh, you know, it's like, yeah. stop it. Yeah. I know. Excellent. No, but it's been, it's been super fun. So our goal is to see at the end of the 30 days, what, what has happened. I mean, this, this topic right here, I was like, yeah, let's do this. Let's do this. Dr. Gomez. Excellent. Let's do two. Let's do a couple, like two more of these, uh, FAQs. And we'll get into to some, is it true? But I love this one. Here's a question. This will be for, uh, Dr. Luke. I like this one. Why are those last 10 pounds, so difficult to lose and what are some tips for overcoming a weight loss plateau when it comes to fitness yes great question right it always seems like those last 10 pounds except i mean i i can't talk i've never i'm six four and 170 pounds and never have changed so but i have people that do have that challenge and it does seem to be that last 10 10 pounds and right you're going you know you've got all along the way, you've you've hit your goals, you've hit your goals, and then you hit a plateau. And I think similarly, that can be said with strength training, right? Or uh, endurance training, um, a lot of different things that are really, really hard to do. The last 10% is tough. And that's where people kind of get frustrated and start to maybe give up or um, they're not sticking to the plan as long. I think really it does come down to pushing just a little bit harder at the end, right? Getting stricter with your diet, having someone more accountable or someone that's accountable for what you're doing, really checking in on you. Um, you're hitting all your workouts. Maybe you're really focusing on sleep, right? I think logging exactly what you're doing and have someone look at what you could clean up just a little bit more, right? Because the last 10% is the hardest. That's why professional athletes are at the top. Yeah. They go that extra mile. And, uh, you know, for even the general person, the last 10%, you got to go the extra mile. And uh, I think if people really understand that it's not just a gradual um, climb, um, you got to push hard at the end. It's steepest at the top. And yeah. it's steepest at the top for a reason. So uh, I think just try harder. Just try yeah. a little harder. And uh, it's a big motto of mine. I like to try to, to try a little harder every day. And uh, I think you'll get there, right? Yeah. I think you'll get there. But don't yeah. give up, right? You know, one of the don't things I, the, one of the the things the I say uh, in my practice, uh, Luke and, and Paula, to my patients, uh, you know, you're talking right now, Luke, about broadening that focus and, and, and gaining a deeper perspective. But you're also talking about some practical stuff, layering some things on. As you said, maybe you have to add a little more resistance training. Maybe you have to add a little more cardio. Maybe you have to hit the hills. Maybe you have to certainly fine tune the diet, sleep better. But but broaden that focus and, and, and really get that deeper resolve. And that will get you over those barriers. I love it. Love the engagement. Let me ask this question for you, uh, Paula. Here's the last FAQ I'll do. People always want to know this. So here we go. So we're talking about uh, losing those last 10 pounds, talking about calories, all that kind of stuff. But here's, here's a question. What are some of the best calorie burning activities that you can do in 30 minutes? In 30 minutes. Uh, jump rope. Jump rope is a great calorie burner. Jump rope. Um, interval training is a great, uh, just, you know, Absolutely. 30 seconds on 30 seconds off or you know the the I, I believe we read the same article but Norway also had the uh 10 by 10 by one and it's yeah right you got one minute of all out crazy run you know and then you do one minute of recovery then you do that 10 times but re before that you make sure you get a good warm-up about a 10 minute slow jog steady jog then you go 10 minutes uh, one minute on one minute off for 10 minutes and then you uh recover so awesome. yeah, I, I think that anything high intensity would, would be what you're looking for. Wonderful. Let's get into a section now what I call, uh, is it true that? So what I want to say to, uh, to uh, both Luke and Paula, I'm going to say, is it true that, and then we're going to fill in the, uh, fill in the blank, and then we're going to get an answer. We'll get through as many as, these, as we can, and then we'll get into some misrespect. This is awesome. Love it. Here we go. Dr. Luke, first question. Here it is. Is it true that the more you sweat during a workout, the more fat the body is burning. You're not holding us to these, right? Like I'm not <laughs> holding you to it at all. No, this is no. That's why, that's why yeah, I read the disclaimer great. at the beginning that this is not a, a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. There we go. No, the more <laughs> you sweat, the more fat you burn. Um, I believe that is false, and you know my in, in my inclination is that actually, you know, people sweat differently, but as you get actually a little more fit 
you tend to sweat actually a little bit more. Um, and not, you're not burning fat per se, right? Your body is cooling off, right? It's efficient. Absolutely. You're efficiently cooling off mm -hmm. and it's a mechanism. I mean, a lot of mammals have that mechanism in, in their um, system to, to perspirate through the skin. So no, it is not burning fat. Your body is just efficiently cooling off because you're overheating. Right. Um, and it is not a burning fat mechanism. Now you might like, you might lose some water weight. Right. But, um, that is not necessarily burning fat. So excellent. There you go. Okay. You answered it and very appropriately. You, go, go ahead, Paul. You want to say I'll, something I'll on that? You, and bag. the more, the more hydrated you are, the yes. more you'll sweat, you know, so that's just, so hydrate guys, hydrate. Hydration again, water is life. So I like this question. Here it is, Paula. Is it true that older adults are the least likely to benefit from physical activity. I think we kind of just already answered that question going about that Nor Norwegian story. So I'm going to yeah. skip that one. Let me give you another one. That's okay. what we've been answered. Here we go. I like Norwegians have it together. They, they got it together. They, they, they're in their groove. They are just grooving it. And we got to be like that. No doubt. Here we go. Here we go, Paul. I'll follow up with this one. Here it is. Is it true that active people need extra protein or protein supplements to build muscles? All right. Um, Active and protein. Um, well, if you're working out and you're building muscle, you know, the protein is what will help when you, it, it, it helps to repair. That's what the protein is there for, is to repair and build your muscles. So um, if you are, do you need more? Maybe a little bit more, but really, no. I think, I think um, you know, maybe a bodybuilder or something like that, if it's an extreme, but I think normal people just uh, about the same. Yeah. And so one of the things I say is, is I would agree with you uh, absolutely on this one. I, I say, you know, listen, we, from, when it comes to like nutrition, we want you to have uh, a healthy diet. And for me as a physician, it's in, it's predominantly whole foods, plant-based. There can right. be some flesh related on that one, but predominantly a diet that's high in fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. Hydration, mm -hmm. water is life. I keep saying exactly. it is super important to you, but it's part of a broader lifestyle again. But, but what you're doing each and every day, it's, it's your journey, of course. You know, we want, that's why you have a team. It takes a village. You have your medical doctor, you have your fitness person, you have a nutritionist, you have your family for social support. That's where you kind of work on your journey. So whatever Tom Brady might be doing, that may not apply to you. Uh, you know, whatever Arnold Schwarzenegger did back in the day when he was doing his competitions with bodybuilding, that may not apply to you today. And so we have to think about this is why we want to have a baseline assessment and then figure out how we can customize and individualize your needs. Here we go. Dr. Luke, I like this one. Is it true that working out at the gym will provide the best results? Aha. <laughs> well, you, um, like I said earlier, right? You, you want, you need to want to be there is a big part of it. You need to understand the why about why you're going to the gym. I think it's a big one. I wanted to touch on a little bit earlier. Like, why are you going to the gym? You think it's just because you think you're going to get better because you went to the gym. Um, do you, or do you have a specific plan in mind? Do you have a specific outcome that you want to accomplish each time that you go? Right. Uh, have you laid out your week about why you're going to the gym? Um, you know, if that's the case, the gym setting is great right? You, you, it's perfect. It has all the equipment that you need. Maybe you're part of a classes. I do feel classes provide a better outcome than individuals working out for the most part, right? It's a community. The accountability. Yeah. The community. And I'm kind of biased being in a CrossFit gym, but it's more of a community gym. It is people push you a little harder and you, you give yourself a little bit more, you leave a little bit less in the tank. And you know what? If you don't show up that day, you're going to hear about it. Uh, well, hey, why didn't you, I didn't see you at the gym yesterday? What happened? Um, we're at home. It's and, and I I know it's a little easier to say, oh yeah, that rep, that one's a tough one. Maybe I'll I mean I'll just skip that one today, right? <laughs> I'll skip that and go watch TV right now. Yeah, go watch TV. Or uh, yeah, the couch looks really good. Or should I go downstairs and do my sit ups and planks and high intensity interval training? Yeah, the gym is great for that avenue. But like I said, you need to know your why and you need to enjoy going there. Um, so you hit that on that why. I love it. Here well, we go. I'm going to uh, add a little yeah, something to go this. Go ahead, Paula. Please. The, 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 right now, most a lot of people are working out at home. And I, I believe these people cannot wait to get back into the gym <laughs> because, you know, they're tired of being at home, but being at home and you're, you're like, uh, your intentions are there. You're like, I'm going to get up, I'm going to work out. And then all of a sudden your kid, children are at your feet 
And so you go and do that. And then, then you start again, you start to work out and then all of a sudden, oh, I should throw a load of laundry into the wash, you know? So it, it's, it's really, I think it's, it, for some people, it's difficult to be consistent at the gym. I mean, I'm sorry, at home, but uh, the gym, there's not much you can do, but work out. I mean, that's what you, you go there and you get your plan done. You see your friends, you have your community, you get your workout in. Uh, it's, it's wonderful. So, um, but I, I do believe that there's, there's benefits to both yeah. at home is more convenient but at the gym, it's a lot of community and, and uh, should I say more convenient, but there's a lot of things that can get in your way, right? Right. There's no doubt. Well, if, oh, you're yeah. like me, if you're like me in the days, at least pre-pandemic the gym, I'm just hamming it up with everybody up in there because I'm a, I'm a people <laughs> yeah. person. So I'm just striking up conversations and then I realized I didn't work out at all. Anyway, just checking, <laughs> one hour, one one hour, hour, hour at the water cooler. I know. I was like, hey, yeah. really good conversation. That's my community. I love it. Let's get into some Miss versus Facts, guys. This is so awesome. Love it. All right. Here's how it works, everybody. Uh, on Health360 with Dr. G, Miss versus Facts. I say the statement and then our panel says myth or fact. We're going to get through this like rapid fire. Boom, 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 boom. I might actually even participate. I haven't participated much at all during this discussion. It's all good, uh, but let's do it. So here we go. Uh, Dr. Luke, I like this one. Myth or fact, we'll get through this as much as we can. Here we go. Um, you know what? I, I want to take the easy one. Yeah, I mean, I, let, me, let me give myself the first one. This Lay is the up. Dr. G one. Uh, I love it. Here it is. Ma here's the statement. Maintain, maintaining physical fitness requires major lifestyle changes. That is a, that is a myth. Uh, maintaining uh, physical fitness does not require major changes. We're talking about, again, you can be fit in 30 minutes or less by just doing little by little. Again, your journey is going to be a personal journey, but there's little things that you can do throughout today. You don't, don't think about, about getting it done all at one time find what's going to work for you. And there's so many ways you can do it. I said earlier, I'd rather just have somebody move and get moving with purpose, move with, with passion. It's a beautiful thing. We don't ever want to take that for granted. Here we go. I like this one, Dr. Luke, myth or fact, sweating means you're out of shape. <laughs> Good. Thanks for the layup again. But you bet. Uh, uh, yeah, like I touched on earlier, right? Actually sweating um, can mean you're hydrated correctly. You're actually in shape, more efficient at um getting rid of the heat that you're building up in your body. And um, a lot of the studies are actually saying if you sweat a little bit more, you're actually uh, slightly in better shape. Um, so that is a myth. All right, right here we go. Paul, I like this one. I'm skipping around a little bit, but I like this one. Here it is. Uh, you should stretch out before you work out. Myth or fact? No, you should you should do a dynamic warm up before you work out. That means uh, uh, you're moving the body parts that you're going to work out to get them warmed up and ready to go for your workout. So, you know, if you're going to do lunges, you're going to warm up those legs, you're going to warm up those, those quads and things like that, your glutes, that kind of stuff. So dynamic warm up. All right. I love it. Here we go. Here we go. Dr. Look, I like this one. Here's a statement. No pain, no gain. Myth or fact? No pain, no gain is a myth. Please explain. Right? <laughs> no challenge, no change is what I've changed my, uh, right on. Um, yeah, my, no I guess my phrase to no challenge, no change, right? Um, it doesn't have to be painful, right? There will be occasional workouts that are uncomfortable, right? And sometimes you got to push yourself a little bit to make, you got to challenge yourself a little bit to make that change, but pain is not uh, the yeah. anticipated outcome unless you're some sort of like crazy uh, 200 miler racer and that's what you like to do right <laughs> know your why but that's a myth thank you uh, no thank you very much no i like this one here we go paul i like this one here's a statement myth or fact exercise machines beat free weights myth Ooh. or fact please explain that i believe is um it depends on the person it depends on the person, don't you think? Yeah. Um, because Absolutely. some, right? Some people need that, uh, the guidance of that machine and a lockout, that kind of stuff, or the machines, you know, you, you can, um, it helps regulate your movement. And on the other side, the free, the free weights are, um, are wonderful because you're working independently. And I mean, that's, you get great benefit from that, but I do believe it's, it's a personal preference. Excellent. Here we go. I like this one, yeah. Dr. Luke. I like this one. Here it is. Here's a statement. It is okay to exercise every day. Myth or fact? Fact. Please explain. Yes. You, in fact, it's recommended that you exercise every day. Does it have to be um, go hard, you know, all out every day? No, but actually there, you know, unless you're going to do some short interval stuff, like we talked about earlier, Maybe that is your route you want to go, but it is not going to be harmful to exercise every day. It is going to help your overall 
um, quality and length of life. All right, here we go. I like this. We'll do a couple more of these. Here we go. Paul, I like this one. Here's a statement. To really cinch your waistline, you are better off doing multi-muscle exercises that target every region of your core rather than doing crunches. Myth or fact? Well, I, I do believe, uh, well, first of all, you cannot spot reduce. You cannot hit, you know, spot reduce. So um, uh, to cinch your waistline, you, you need to do an overall body workout. You need to watch what you're eating. You need to hydrate. You need to sleep. So it's all a balance. So I'd say it's a myth. All right. I love it. Here we go. I like this one. Dr. Luke will do a couple more of these. I like this one. Here it is. A perfect workout is one hour long. <laughs> you, yeah. That was a nice one. I gave you that one. Like myth it. or fact, please explain. Myth. Please explain. Well, I, I mean, mostly myth, right? Maybe it is. Maybe it is a perfect at a one, one hour for you, you just hit that perfect workout, right? You got that high or you get that you ran for an hour. It was like, that was the best thing ever. But mostly um, that is, I mean, that used to be the thought. I got to go to the gym and work out for an hour, right? That has definitely been busted now. So um, you can get good workouts shorter or longer. Excellent. Here we go. Why? <laughs> I like this one, Paula. I like this one. We'll do maybe like two more of these. Here we go. Here's a statement. It is important to incorporate recovery days into your workout routine. Myth or fact? I believe that's true. Please explain. I think that is fact. You you should get recovery days. Now, if you're working, if if it's a walk, if you work, if your workout is a walk every day, probably not. But if you're doing heavy training, you definitely need recovery days. Excellent. Here we go. I like this one. This last one for Dr. Luke. I like this one. Um, here's a statement. Weight loss should be the most important goal of fitness and exercise. Myth or fact? That is a myth. Please explain. And I think like we talked about this whole show, right? Fitness, the overall goal of exercise and fitness is to make you um, overall feel better, healthier, and live longer. And if you're strictly your goal is weight loss, um, yeah. and what happens if you don't hit that goal, right? You feel you don't feel healthy. You don't feel all those things that you intent you you got into fitness and and those healthy changes to to begin with. So, um, it is a part of it, absolutely, right? If we're talking about uh, control of diabetes and all those other cardiovascular changes that come with obesity, and um, but. No, it is not the, the only goal. Wonderful. There you go, everybody. We had myths or facts. There you go. So we only have about five minutes left. This has been going by super fast, <laughs> but, uh, but, but I just been just enjoying this conversation with Dr. Luke Greenwell and Ms. Paula McBride, just talking fitness. Can things be done in 30 minutes? But what are, what can you do? But really the whole thing is we're talking about how do we continue to engage people? How do we look at this as a very inclusive thing to do again, to improve your health and well being? So, uh, so what I want to start out with, with Paula, uh, go ahead and, and give us a couple take up points. You know, people have been listening to the show, uh, thinking about fitness, what they could do. Give us a few action steps, a few take home points for people out there that are listening to us to, to get to that next level, to be the change that they want to be and really respond to fitness. Of course. Um, good question. Uh, you know, I believe that you have to do something that you enjoy. You know, if, if you love to run, if you love to walk, walk uh, whatever it might be, do that. But um, you enjoy what you're doing. So uh, find something that you enjoy, get a program together. Um, it, you know, go, get to a club, get back to your community. Um, you know, uh, a good thing to do is, is uh, like you were, like you said before, have a goal, you know, find something to work towards. But so the main main couple of things that I think is finding that goal, um, hydrating, I thought was a great uh, point and just um, enjoy what you're doing. Wonderful. Thank you, Paula. Dr. Luke, give us a few take on points to help people uh, be successful with some of the things we're talking about today, but just having success in fitness uh, leading to success and other things in their lives. What, what should people be doing now? What are those action steps? Yeah, I think number one, uh, look at the broader picture, right? But don't be overwhelmed by the broader picture, right? Take in, uh, you know, do uh, a self assessment of the major areas of your health and fitness and write it down. And then just see like where you're at systems check on these areas of your life, sleep, nutrition, fitness, um, mental state, you know, those types of things, right? And then say, all right, in six months, I want to be where at with these, 
right? And then, you know, just start on the path to make that successful. And you can kind of backtrack from there. So I always like writing out a plan. And if you don't know how to do that, find a coach, find a personal trainer, find a doctor, an MD, find someone that's going to help you do that, right? And, you know, that will ultimately snowball into just much healthier habits. So that's number one. Number two, I think I'm piggybacking off of Paula is do think, you know, have something that you like to do, right? And, and then work towards that goal, right? If you like to cycle, if you like to run, if you like to CrossFit, if you just like to walk, sign up for a walking 5k. If it doesn't happen, do it anyways on your own. And I think that was a big thing last year with all these races and events that got canceled. People ended up doing it on their own. They still had that thing to look forward to. And whenever we have a goal or something to look forward to in, in, in the future, we end up uh, being much more consistent and accountable with our programming. So um, I think that that is two big takeaways. And, and do it do it for yourself, do it for your others. And like Paula hinted at earlier, right? This is about your longevity of health. This is your health span, not your lifespan, right? You know, you wanna be aging healthy. And I think that's what we all want to be. We, we wanna, in our older years, still function, be able to do that, the things we wanna do for as long as we can. And that starts now. Right. And I think if you don't make that a priority, you're going to be really disappointed as you age and about the things that you can do. And you're going to look back and say, man, I wish I would have started earlier. And I don't want I don't want anyone to have those regrets as you get older. So, you know, get started, get a plan and do things you like to do and you'll be in good shape for the rest of next year. Love it. Thank you, Dr. Luke. And before I get into my final thoughts, I want to just give a quick shout out to everybody out there. Again, we have a section called Listener Healthy Oh Yeah Content. And really, if you want me to read your story on this show, go ahead and shoot me a message. You can send me a message to right at the uh, at Health360, WDRG on social media, but share that story. I love to hear from you. I love to hear from all my patients, but I love to hear from all my listeners. You just never know if that story that you share might be the catalyst for the next person to be engaged in their health and well-being. So my final thoughts are this, you know, most of the pop of this population in our country, most of the U.S. population can now anticipate a long and productive life. Exercise is just one piece of the puzzle that's going to confer that longevity and vitality and quality of life. So why not do that? Again, time is our biggest and most valuable commodity. We know that. But you can argue that we don't have the time to not engage in exercise and other healthy behaviors. We know that there's a growing body of evidence that as we have healthy behaviors, healthy diet, exercise, we can promote, again, those longevity factors. But it can help us maintain and not only just maintain, but even supersede our goals that we have in our life and our health. And, of course, it'll risk, reduce the risk of chronic disease burden across the lifespan. So my final thoughts for you, have a deeper goal. Don't get discouraged have a community to help you out along the way and you will have success at your fingertips. So I want to thank my guests today. This has been so awesome. Dr. Luke Greenwell, Dr. Luke Greenwell, again, owner, Recover RX Physical Therapy LLC, and Paul McBride, fitness instructor, uh, yoga and Pilates trainer, personal trainer, group exercise coordinator at Edward, Edward Elmer's Health and Fitness Center. You've been listening to and watching Health 360 with Dr. G, a healthy driven podcast. This episode is written by Mark D. Gomez, MD, and Tiffany E.R. Gomez. Producers are Tiffany E.R. Gomez and Sarah Zwack. Audio and video production specialist is Mike Paskey, copyright 2021. Edward Elmer's Health all rights reserved. For more awesome health information, visit me at health360podcast.com and follow me across all social media at health360wdrg. Until next time, this is Dr. G signing off. Peace out. Peace out.